Hello and welcome back to another game review. My name is Heiken and today we're going to answer the question how good is Phoenix Point and is it worth your time and money? In Phoenix Point you are tasked to save the world, build bases, manage squads and deploy numerous teams on tactical missions in order to combat the Phoenix Point's Pandoran virus, which is the origin of the aliens. In my review, I will be comparing that game quite heavily to XCOM 2 as it falls into the very uh, same genre. And since it has been created as a lead developer by the lead developer that was responsible for the original XCOM UFO Unknown, that is a great place to start. So what do I think about the game? Let's look at the good, the bad and the ugly. Starting with the good, the good is definitely partially the graphics. They are up to date, the detailed character models and the unique art style really let you feel the threat of the aliens as they are coming for you. The animations within the combat are fluid and the combat itself is action packed. During all of that, the sound that you are going to hear is okay. I would say for a triple A title, the music quality is a little bit monotonous. Uh, we find better quality in other games like XCOM, for instance, but the FX um, is pretty much on spot. Whenever you're shooting a weapon, you really have a good feel for that type of caliber and weapon that you're using. All of the dialogues within the game are fully voiced, which is a nice way of um, implementing a little bit more immersion throughout the game. Which leads us to the faction settings. The world setting itself is comprised, amongst others, with three main factions. Each of them have their very unique abilities and different approaches to the game. They want to solve the crisis and all of the consequences in their individual approach. As you progress, it becomes clearer and clearer that all three of these factions arrival with one another and that war between them is just a matter of time, inevitable as they um, are in competition for the ultimate goal, how to deal with the virus. But even within that conflict itself, you can find that the factions are not as watertight as they seem. There are neat little uh, cracks that show over the course of the dialogue. Sub-factions emerge and you even have a couple of quests that are aligned to that. So the exploration of the world overall and how to deal with the virus is very realistic. It comes across as a well thought through setting. Another noticeable um, plus is the fresh breath that it brings to the genre. New and uh, revolutionary approaches to the game such as the introduction of the hitbox system compared to the percentage chance hit system of XCOM make the combats more realistic. That also includes cover as the calculation of cover now uh, more looks at the angle of how you're shooting at an enemy and less at um, their cover as a static um, unit. However, that uh, comes as a mixed bag at times it feels like your soldiers do not have any cover at all because there's always that little niche where you can freely shoot their arm, their leg or whatnot and still hit them. The game has a very convincing overall storyline. The origin of the aliens is slowly unraveled as you're playing through the game. You don't immediately know all of that, but you get to know it over time and with multiple endings uh, throughout the campaign, there is a certain amount of replayability as you want to know how to beat the virus in multiple forms. So, so the overall mantling of the game definitely is better than in any other game that I've seen. It is very concise. The storytelling is very good when it just comes to the base core main story. Which brings us to the improvement potential of uh, the game. 
The question about what is wrong with uh, Phoenix Point can be summarized in the saying, good intentions are typically the opposite of good execution. Phoenix Point has many great ideas, but in my perspective, it is a fundamentally flawed game because many of these ideas are either not well thought through or sometimes incoherent, imbalanced, and in many occasions, the game appears to be convoluted. What I mean with that is, in six to seven very concise examples. Number one would be the progression of the game. The selection to have a horizontal instead of a vertical progression, i.e. as the game goes on, you get side grades instead of upgrades, is generally okay. There is nothing wrong with that. However, it comes with a couple of problems, specifically if you're not implementing it well. There are many examples of weapons that you research throughout the game that are not only not a side grade, but they are literal downgrades to what you had beforehand. There is nothing less rewarding than spending a lot of time into finding a new option of how to deal with the aliens just to find out that that new option completely sucks and was a huge waste of time. Number two would be the pacing of the game. I started the game with three DLCs and it is a great example and a personal gripe of mine. I had to deal not only with the main quest, quests thereof, the side quests for each of the three factions, sideline quests of the side quests of all of these factions, a whopping 22 quests for the ancient weapons, follow-up quests for each faction, a complete storyline for the robotic factions, and another sideline quest for a bit of extra uh, equipment that had been lost and scattered across the world. The problem with that is everything happened at the same time and was completely convoluted. It was unclear what to do. It was even worse than anything that I've seen in the hottest of environments of XCOM 2. More is not always better. Which nicely segues into example number three, the complete overload of the game with many, many systems. The game has so many subsystems, specifically when it comes to weapons, that some of them are simply redundant and or imbalanced. You do have normal weapons with uh, weapon damage and shred, then you do have piercing weapons, then you do have a little bit more accurate or less accurate weapon. Sounds already complex, well, wait a second until you hear the rest. You then also have asset weapons that deal um, armor damage, but are dealing that delayed. And once the armor is gone, they actually deal even more damage. You do have poison, which is damage over time, but it's somewhat uh, mitigated by other factors. And then you do have fire, which is yet another damage over time, which is highly more efficient than poison can spread, but is somewhat mitigated by armor. Uh, to top that off, you do have viral weapons uh, that will attack the willpower of the enemies, which is oftentimes way too high to even meaningfully um, affect them, and is a subpar option to simply killing the enemies. The point that I'm trying to bring across is Phoenix Point drowns in complexity, and more complexity, in my perspective, never means higher difficulty. More complexity just means that a couple of people that can deal very well with complexity come up with guides and best strategies and everybody else will simply follow that, making 90% of your game content redundant. The enemies that I found are not particularly vulnerable to specific weapons, so there wasn't even a rock, paper and scissor idea behind it. Couple that with the original horizontal instead of vertical progression and it becomes even more problematic. Whenever I found something cool and new, I was soon disappointed about it simply not working as well as it should. Which brings me to point number four, the enemy design. There is an evolve or evolution mechanic within the game, which means the enemies are becoming gradually stronger and can mutate into different parts. Cool on paper, but it unfortunately sucks in reality. My biggest gripe with the game is that most of the abilities that the enemies do have are simply anti-fun. Uh, there is no great counterplay to most of them. You can sometimes either make yourself completely immune to them um, and negate them that way if they are too annoying, but otherwise you just have to suck it up and deal with it. 
Examples of these anti-fun mechanics are mind control and then followed up by a jumping off of a cliff or going elsewise completely out of line of sight so that even uh, within the next two to three rounds you can't reach the mind controller. Mind you, mind control is semi-permanent until the enemy runs out of uh, willpower and that can really take a while. So you're left with the option to either destroy the weapon of your mind controlled companion, mind you, that is your weapon, uh, take him out uh, and therefore lose a soldier or charge after the mind controller. There is no other way to counter it. While Sexcom allows for mind shields and um, a very limited duration for mind control, i.e. typically two to three rounds, there's no such thing here. Um, other examples would be goo artillery, which just shoots across the entirety of the field. Um, putting big puddles of goo onto the field that are completely traversable. If your uh, poor soldiers are stuck in there, they cannot move for multiple rounds. Mind you, many of the missions are timed and enemy snipers are a real thing, so you're just stuck in the open and are a sitting duck. That brings us to full invisibility snipers, will point draining fog, or my personal favorite, any enemies that uh, can be killed but will then reanimate and there is nothing that you can do about the reanimation or the massive damage that it will deal. It will consume either a full Overwatch uh, regimen or uh, imbalanced abilities such as a pre-scream uh, to at least somewhat mitigate them. My point is, most of the enemy design was not um, created with a rock, paper, scissor mindset or with an interesting um, interaction of abilities. Most of these designs were just created with a how can I hinder the player's advancement in the most effective way, leaving you questioning yourself, why wouldn't you have similar abilities to deal with the aliens? But that might be one of my next points. Which brings us to another problem that is the poor balancing of your own skills. Well, the enemies might be anti-fun, but your skills of your soldiers are not very well balanced either. I do understand that the very modular concept of uh, slapping two classes together and allowing a free selection of skills might be a great design on paper. In reality, however, it creates uh, a problem because some of uh, the skills are vastly, vastly overpowered. War Scream, as an example, allows you to um, steal uh, half of uh, the enemy's um, action economy in a very significant radius for just one AP. Dash allows you to go across the entirety of the battlefield. And Adrenaline uh, Rush allows you to uh, shoot expensive weapons uh, as if they would be uh, one AP weapons instead. Those are just examples. Another example is uh, displayed uh, on the screen at the moment. A build that resets all of uh, the actions where you can literally clear the entire map with a single overpowered soldier. Uh, that, in contrast, uh, also uh, has another side, which are the completely underpowered items, i.e. vehicles with limited uh, ammo, and uh, the problem to uh, field them because they cost three uh, soldier slots. So my uh, fundamental issue with that is it makes one way of playing the game much stronger than any other way of playing the game and trivializes challenges once you have understood how the right or best setup of skills and squads are achieved. The final problematic point is the unnecessary micromanagement. Uh, whilst it is fun to do it, it at the beginning, the game misrepresents difficulty uh, for micromanagement, whether that is individual magazine management for every weapon of every soldier in your squad, or the trade management with 80 plus havens uh, where you need to fly around and literally physically trade with them individually without uh, automating it, whether it is the individual soldier layout with a helm and armor and a feed slot, three different attachments, mutation and robotizing options, you are ending up with hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of micro clicks just to get the bare minimum done. 
Most of that is unnecessary and isn't contributing to the game. So, how to answer the question, is Phoenix Point still worth it? Is it worth your time or money? I would give uh, Phoenix Point a mixed uh, review. It is overall a 5 out of 10 stars, so a mediocre uh, game. It is a 6 to 7 stars if you are a fan of the genre. Uh, it actually is a decent title in the genre. However, I must say with that uh, verdict that the game itself has a very significant potential to be better if it would uh, declutter, rebalance, look at the progression, not use DLCs to just create more convolution and fundamentally rethink the pacing and progression of the game. If that could be attached, uh, you would look at a 9 to 10 out of 10 game. It is a fantastic title at heart, but unfortunately the many flaws will uh, weigh on you during your play. And I'm uh, saying that well aware that uh, soon there is going to be my blend playthrough of the game launching, which if you haven't taken a look at it, you might want to take a look at it where we can explore the game together. All of my criticism doesn't take away from the fact that you definitely can enjoy the game. It is a great uh, spend of time and you would need to know whether or not you are a fan of the genre. If the answer is yes, then I would say it is worth your time. If the answer is no, then this one is a skip. Thanks for watching and think about uh, having a dance with uh, the like button. It is quite lonely over there and would enjoy some company. Take care. Bye bye.